And welcome to Homegrown Radio, NJ.org. You are listening to Chew the Scene with Lauren and Danny. Kevin in the hot seat. Yep, Hello. I'm here. And we are excited to have as our guest, Dennis Giacino, uh, writer, composer, lyricist of the off-Broadway hit, Disenchanted. Welcome. Welcome, well, Dennis. Thank you very much. It's so great to be here with you all. Thanks for having me. Well, it, what's exciting is that this was originally going to be a phone interview, and yeah, then you and I were talking yesterday, and you said, I'm going to come in. And I was like, oh my god! I know, I was so like excited. Usually, like, you know, Lauren will be like, she'll tell me who's coming in. And I'm like, in studio? Because I remember you said yeah. he was, he, it was a phoner. We call it a phoner. A phoner, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and she said, no, he's meeting me, you know, at, uh, at 1230. And I said, oh. In studio? Yes. I said, <laughs> we get coffee, so but yes. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> welcome to the homegrown house in good old Boonton, New Jersey. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. yeah. And you're taking a break from rehearsals. I am. We're in rehearsal right now in New York City for a production we're going to do up in Connecticut uh, next weekend. <gasps> How right. exciting. I know. I so. know. It is exciting. And where, where in Connecticut, real quick? Uh, in Fairfield, Connecticut. At, uh, at uh, Fairfield. There's a Fairfield Theater uh, there that we're doing it at it's uh you just take metro north you get off and it's literally a block from it's from a, uh, yeah so you get perfect. off in fairfield but it's it's great it's great you know couple hundred seat or so theater and a great cast from new york city that's yeah. great it's gonna I, be fun yeah. i have a friend who works at fairfield university so come familiar, on over familiar with fairfield so yeah excellent I would love to see it actually Very i just good. directed yeah. it as danny knows and kevin yeah. knows yes i had the honor of directing the show uh, at the women's theater company last may and I told we Dennis and I and Kevin met for coffee, and I said I'm gonna be upfront with you. When I first uh, got this, you know, was told we're gonna do Disenchanted, I was like, oh, princesses, because <laughs> ah, I was. Dennis knows, so I'm, I, you know me, I keep it real. Um, and then I got to working on the show, and I loved it. Because it's so much more like what we were talking about than just princesses. There's, it's yeah. a layered piece. Yeah, yeah. When we wrote the songs, I, I sat down. You know, I, I, I it's kind of like Hades Town, where you know you, you have the director or the writer, mm -hmm. and then the director sort of helps you develop it. And, mm -hmm. and so Fieli Matias, uh, for thirty years, I can't believe it's been thirty years, but thirty years, um, you know, we've been writing material, and and so um, we were traveling across Canada doing another show, and I said. I have an idea for something. Let's let's yeah. take a little time on this. So Fieli helped me um, develop it, and when I said it's about princesses, he looked at me and he was like, "That's what? <laughs> that's not what we hey, do." That's what I said. And, <laughs> yeah. And so um, when we wrote it, we we kind of worked on on the three levels. You know, the first step in was princesses, mm -hmm. um, because we felt there was something we we wanted to to sort of mock and 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 say about pop culture. Mm -hmm. And then from there, of course, you know, we went into the the female empowerment realm. Mm -hmm. And then underneath that is sort of this very human level that men, women, gay, straight, doesn't matter the age, everybody could relate to. And, and I think that's what takes Disenchanted beyond the princess realm and just sort of into a human feel. Yeah. And, you know, and I did bring up, too, when we were at coffee, it's not, about, it's not man bashing. Not at all. Because it, you, it, it was a rule of ours. It easily go to, yeah. to that. And it, and it doesn't at all. Because the men were that's laughing fine. just as hard as the exactly. women in the audience. You right. Know? There's something for everybody in it. And um, that was one of our rules. Uh, we had two rules. First rule was it had to tell the truth. If there was something in it that was just jokey or, you know, just for a cheap laugh, we said, that's got to go unless mm -hmm. it tells the truth. And the second thing mm -hmm. was it can't be man-hating. Yeah. Yeah. It's just got to be empowering for all. Yeah. It's the truth. So how did the, the princess come into mind, though? Like, how did it pop into your head? Were you... Did you just see something? Was it something that you always wanted to tackle? Like, what at that moment you were like, you know what? Let's try this. Yeah, Danny, that's a great question. Um, I used to be a history teacher. And so I used to teach about Pocahontas, the real Pocahontas, <laughs> the 10-year-old kind of rough-and-tumble tomboy princess um, And uh, when we first meet her. And, um, and then, you know, about 1995, I, I saw an animated version of Pocahontas, and I thought, well, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the same princess I used to teach about. So I imagined a song in which the real Pocahontas 
uh, would sing about what she felt about that Pocahontas up on the screen. And that kind of got the ball rolling. And then all the other princesses started coming into my... Sometimes in, in, in press, they call me the Princess Whisperer, which is really, like, uh. odd. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's so weird. And so all these other princesses started talking to me. Well, I've got a complaint, too. Well, I don't like being a damsel in distress. And, mm. and then that sort of created the show. Yeah. You know, I, I love that you say that because... Um, I'm actually working on uh, the theater that I work at. We're doing Matilda. Oh, nice. And we actually had... Is that um, Growing Stage? Yes. Oh, yes. my God. I, Steve I, Fredericks and yes. I and Lori, and we used to do shows all, all the time. So hey, we just Hey, Hey, hey. I, I, you Growing know, I Stage. You. I had a feeling that, yeah, I, I remember, um, mm -hmm. I had a feeling there was a, a connection. Sure. <laughs> but we just had, we had a family that got up and left before the act was over. Wow. And they said that it was too violent. What? And the language. And okay. and the the mother was a teacher, Matilda. Uh huh. Oh I know Matilda. Okay. And, and I. Well, and why I did they see say, disenchanted? And no. they, didn't, they didn't come up to me. And I think I would have said, you know, have you read the book? Because it's very faithful to the book. And they say hell in in the show. I think that's the language. Oh and Miss Trunchbull's mean, and she will grab you by the you know the top of your hair and and throw you across the room. So is that violent? But I just so we had this whole conversation about Grimm's fairy tales and uh, Hans Christian Andersen right. and how we were just, we were just yeah. talking about. And I that. mean, but just right. what you were saying, yeah. you know, before it was Disneyified. If you look at the actual story, they are a little dark. And we oh, just talked a about oh, or a lot dark. Right. We were You're talking so right. about the Little Mermaid, how she yeah. basically kills herself at the end. She does. People. Right. We might right. have some. I don't. Know, do we have questions? Or are those just people tuning in? Because I want to make sure. Hi, folks tuning in. Want you to to wave at everyone. Oh, Wave. hi. Hello. No, you're I'm right. going to bring it up the, on my phone. And then the old fairy it tales are so, I mean, in, in the original Snow White, I, the, the way the, the, the queen, you know, mirror, mirror on the wall mm. dies is they, they put her in like these hot boots, these, these metal hot boots. They heat them up and, and, and make her dance until she drops dead. Oh I mean, God. these are horrible. Well, look yeah. at Melissa Finn. <laughs> Melissa Finn, how she dies with doesn't she like fall she turns into the dragon and then falls off. Right. And even going back to Snow White, let's just talk a little bit how the Queen sends the huntsman out to cut out Snow White. To cut heart. out her heart. Right? And exactly. Put it, bring it back to me in a gilded box. Yeah. I mean, right. seriously. Yeah. Well, at least the box would be nice. Now <laughs> listen, you have something you have something in your hands, and I feel like let's you know I do. I brought gifts. You know? <gasps> yeah. Oh my god, we love gifts. I'm, I'm originally from Jersey. My mother told me never show up anywhere without a gift. Oh my god. Are you Italian? Are you Italian? Uh, are, are you kidding? Of course, come on. on. That I don't look Italian, name, but that I'm last Italian, Italian. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. So I brought gifts. I, I hope you guys like them. I oh, my brought, God. We just made uh, a 10th anniversary. Um, uh, 10 years. What? I know. 10th anniversary. And, and yet the show is still new. You know, it's, it's always, new for me. you know, because it's it's new to whoever does it, but then yeah. it, or sees it. But as I always say, and I think Peter Schaffer said this uh, a long time ago, as long as I'm alive, so is my show. Yeah. Right? So the Love show is, is still constantly evolving, right? And uh, with, with pop culture. And so we just made a brand new CD Love with... It. Ethan Pop, Tony nominated, Grammy nominated for Motown the musical. He came oh, in, and he I produced it, oh, he orchestrated it. He did so much on it. We brought in some of the original uh, off Broadway cast members, and then some people who you know we've sort of met along the way, who were very instrumental in getting yeah. Disenchanted to to where it is today. And I brought new ah, CDs yes! for everybody. Yes. Well, everybody's yeah, sitting happy. here. Yeah. Those of you watching, you yeah. can, well, well, wait. <laughs> You're gonna have to get your, Yeah, go. <laughs> www.dis disalbum.com that's where you I love go. that go yeah. get it so, so oh my god Danny, and i have one for lauren thank and i have you. one for kevin yes, yes. i love Dennis. it thank, thank you. you thank you dennis love, two things we love on this show um food and gifts we love oh and we usually don't get i'm that going often, to get paid so. no. <laughs> we're so excited i did um i did hear some of the uh some of the new records and it's fantastic thank you we had such a great time with it we have the OG Snow White uh, yeah. Michelle Knight who when she hits that we call it the fifth note in the yeah. show skin as white as do it Kevin oh, I Snow no, 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 no. 
Kevin. 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 Going down the spot. No. Go listen to it. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, she she's in um, Andrea Canny, who uh, did one of our original productions down in Orlando. Jenny Lee Stern, who's in Forbidden Broadway yes. right now. Um, Becky Gullsvig, who did the Off Broadway show. I, just a, a whole host of folks um, come in and do the show with uh, Fieli and I and Ethan, um, produced uh, by Ethan and myself and uh, Brad Cerenzia. Tr- uh, and. Uh, Another Italian name. Yeah, okay. and, we stick uh, together, Dennis. That's right. We stick that's together. right. So, and then we have to talk about the Italian version of the show in Italian oh. that I went and saw in Rome. You did. Wait, don't tell me this. It's tell so me. true. They I have some recordings. <gasps> really? I have some recordings. I should have brought them with. I bet you it was right? hilarious. That's was oh it God. hilarious? Because hilarious. the Italians are the best. It was they got up that so extra passion. Fun. Oh, they yeah. Do. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, 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 the audience, you know, after every song, Men on their feet going, bravo, bravo. Oh, it was like we God. were watching an opera. Yeah, you know I, I was thinking that, Dennis. We have the same Italian Great brain. Fun. That's right. So it was so much fun, all in Italian. We just got back from Denmark. It was great to hear they oh, they did it exciting. in Danish. Oh so my it was great God. to hear the Little Mermaid sing in, in her original tongue. Oh, that's right. true. I love that. It's very cool. It's let's see what else. It's been translated into Mandarin. They did it in Beijing. Oh my god. Spanish. They just did it in Argentina. That's in incredible. Republic. Anyway, so I went off that I brought this. That's where Yay. we started. So you'll notice that Dennis goes like this. Oh, but, 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 but he'll come oh, back. Oh, so around. we all do. No, 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 we you're all you're do in that. good company. That's our show. Um, you know, I love the Rapunzel number. <laughs> oh, thanks. Van Van Red Sense. That's that number right. is so hilarious. It's so much fun. It's I mean, there. Right? I mean, I could say about every number, but that it, number, the audience would just go crazy. Well, it's you know, it's that that audience participation moment. Yeah. And when I say Rapunzel, everybody gets this picture in their their head yeah. of this pretty you know young yes. thing with the long hair and and our Rapunzel's a little bit different. So you directed it. So you yes. tell us what she looks like. So and she, <laughs> um, you know, we honored the costume, but her demeanor. Mm-hmm. She she we played her very very German, very. Sure. Um, I uh, I'm trying to think of, a, of of an appropriate word. I want to say that the Oktoberfest like October or like that's a, appropriate yes, October, right. but that rigid. Practical, yeah. strong, Burly. and our girl was this little tiny oh, that's girl. She's gonna bring you like a beer and a pretzel. Or something. Yeah, but very. <laughs> and and so, so they were like Rapunzel, and she entered, and she was like had her hands behind her back, and she mm-hmm. she marched, not marched, but she walked through the audience. Oh, sure. And she commanded the room. Um, so it had more of that r- militant German feel to it, as she should. And As the a, audience went nuts because yeah. she looked beautiful. Yeah, this yeah. little tiny girl who was Art, who was Ariel, and and uh, Jasmine, mm-hmm. and then she was this part too with the wig and you know like tangled. which we call by the way I, uh, disclaimer we call the Little Mermaid and Princess Badrubaldor. Yes, for reasons. <laughs> yes, <that> we, <laughs> well because we talked about that. So it, it, yes. can you explain a little about the the Disney not Disney connection Grim Fairy sure. Tale? We have a call. Wait, hold on. Hold on, Peoria, you're on the line. <laughs> <Are> we, <laughs> um, yeah, no, we. I went back to the original public domain princesses. Everybody's checking their phone. Wait, let me see if I got something. I know. I'm like, it? No, was it was that? mine. I'm was the mine. only one who doesn't have a call. I don't. I don't either. I've had it. No, so, so, <laughs> yeah. So talk <laughs> about the princesses. <laughs> so I went back to the original public domain uh, well, where all these princesses were originally born. Right. Right. So from Grimm or or Perot, uh, uh, you can even trace Cinderella back to Asia if if you mm-hmm. do enough research. And and um, same thing with Princess Badrubaldor, or as we know her in the movies, has been. Turned into Jasmine, but right? different story. Different That's, story. That was like a marriage of two. Could you explain to the the how Jasmine came to be? Can you tell our audience? Do you mind? No, I. I, I mean, I, do we want to give it away? Oh, in in ours. In, well, in well, our yeah, version? like how like. How, like where, where Jasmine really came from? Well, sure. You know, if if you uh, <laughs> there's much research that says that actually the Aladdin stories came from South China. You know, is that is that where yeah where we're yeah, yeah 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 came from South China and um, so there's you know there's a lot of misinformation that's out there uh, about these women and so these women when I went back to to the public domain well these women uh, are sort of sitting on the shelves watching all this pop culture come out about them and and you know just were so incensed that it was teaching 
adults and children the wrong messages about the world and about life and about how women had to be, you know, trophies or helpless damsels in distress. And so through a magic spell that goes wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> and instead of it going, the show going till midnight, because nobody wants to sit here until midnight, right? Yeah, that's right. That is a line. <laughs> um, it, right from the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, it goes wonky, and so we have to be out by 925. Yes. And so, <laughs> um, uh, so with that, you know, we, we just felt that, that new stories had to be created mm -hmm. that that were truer to life you know today's life back in the back in history and and sort of put that all together and that's sort of how disenchanted came about yeah i love it i love it. and you know what and i don't want to give away too much because honestly the humor does come from the narrations and from the surprise of and it and the surprise yeah, of yeah, it yeah. all and the princesses i was my girls played it for gone honest they were so truthful mm -hmm. and i think because they played these roles so truthfully it, it it just made it that much funnier big tits is one of my favorite i'm <laughs> saying it on the air big, big tits. Say it one more time big tits. Tits. <laughs> let's say it together one two three big, big tits. tits i when we were blocking that number yes i almost peed in my pants <laughs> it's because, a fun number they wore these like massive costume things yeah pieces. that's right and the audience, and, and because the girls were so serious about it, the audience was that's crying. <gasps> and they it. were honest, you they know. Honest well, that's it. it. And so they weren't trying to be funny. They weren't trying to be silly. They weren't trying to ram anything right. down your face. They were living moment to moment. <laughs> and uh, But they did kind of because they were wearing these enhancements. But anyway. Sure. But it's so funny. Well, and because the title is so eye-catching or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big tits. Uh, I mean, really. Uh, but the song really is about how women see and, and perceive men to treat them. And so they make fun of, of that whole idea. And why were we created like this? Mm -hmm. this, this isn't the way it really is. Well, the first line, yeah. big tits, I can never find a blouse that fits. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I got mammoth tits. I mean, right. it's so... <laughs> and then all the names for all the different ways to describe. I love it. I love it. All the different, all the different names: yeah. bazungas, oh, tatas, all end, that stuff. Bazungas, da -da. Right, right. I don't want to ruin it because you honestly, <laughs> please go see the show because you will like literally be, be filled with joy. But even that last song is very poignant. In the Once show. upon a time. Once upon a time. Yeah, well, if you notice in the show, we start with a song called One More Happily Ever yep. After. One more happily ever after. Which is usually after. the... Da, 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 da. <laughs> She's got it. it. We're hiring her. That's it. I'm what are you next doing one. next weekend? You're I'm coming there. to Connecticut. I'm there. Right? I'm in Fairfield, Connecticut. <laughs> right. I, like like, I just replaced you, sister. <laughs> right. I'm going to write a new princess <laughs> for you right <laughs> off the bat. But, um, yeah, you know, most fairy tales end at One More yeah. Happily Ever After. Yeah. And so what we do is we start at the end with One More Happily Ever After, and then we finish the show at Once Upon a Time, I which is the way that. it starts, because we're writing new stories. Yes. Mm. These are I the new that. stories that. now. So, so yeah, no, we, we wanted that song. Can I tell you a secret about that song? Tell me. I oh love Oh, my secrets. God. Nobody tell anybody who's listening. This All right, is between so, us. This is between <laughs> us. Exclusive. <laughs> so we were going, 2009, we were doing our, our workshop. I had a handful of songs. We had 100... <laughs> folding chairs and we were at like Pearl Studios in New York City and we just wanted to see if the songs worked in front of an audience because you know you write Kevin knows this mm -hmm. and, and you write and you write and then you go does this stuff work? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so let's put it in front of an audience and see. Yeah. They'll let me know. And so, because uh, audiences are honest. They will be. They'll tell we you. Are. Oh, yeah. If you ask for one opinion you'll get ten. You'll get, yeah. Right, you know. Yes. And, and that's what you want as a writer. And you have to learn that early on as a writer. You have to learn Feedback is actually positive, even if it's negative. It's going to get you to where you need to get. I love criticism. It's very informative. I, I, Absolutely. I yeah. love constructive criticism. Right? How can I? Oh, really? Oh, okay. Of Some people yeah. can't take it. Yeah. Nope. Me, I'm like, give me more. That's right. I want to be you, better. When you don't get it, you're like, am I doing a good yes, job? Yes, yes. You're right. questioning. <laughs> right? What so, do I do? So go on. I'm so sorry. That, oh, no, no. That's so important. And and so uh, there we are doing doing the uh, writing. Oh, oh here. Oh. Yeah, there we go. It's probably the wind. Somebody it's took the, out a the light crazy, bulb. It's a big you know, wind. It's the crazy wind. So okay. I could still the hear you, stuff. which means we're still recording. Oh, good. Oh, okay, good. Oh, good. So, All right. So great. go on. So anyway. So, so we just lost power, but now we're back. That was weird. 
Where were we? No, we. <laughs> where are we? <laughs> <laughs> we're in an alternative we're in, universe. We're in right. So, <laughs> so we, when we first um, started, I don't remember the question now. It's <laughs> I got all, the lights went off, and you know, in theater, when the lights go Shit, off. Shit, I forgot too. It. We were talking about starting it, and and how you know when when you first create yes. and right. being a writer and, and, and getting audience finger. feedback, getting right. audience feedback, very important. So we put these <laughs> these songs up to see if if they worked, and um, and we filled the hundred seats. We were surprised. And so in this this workshop reading, which we were charging to be able to pay the actors. And um and Feely and I went out of pocket on it because we you know, it was it was it was an experiment. Yeah, and right. that's we how it is in the it. beginning, yeah. Um and so we extended this and we kept extending it. And, you know, people were were buying tickets for it. So we thought maybe we're on to something here. Maybe these stories mm-hmm. need to be told. Mm-hmm. And and that's when we really started you know, beefing it up, took it off, and then in 2010, about a year later, we entered the New Jersey Playwrights Contest, yes. and and we won. Ah, so, <laughs> I remember that. I so, absolutely yeah. remember that. And so that's when they, William Patterson University put up a production of the show, and then I think what Kevin that was that was sold out. I think that that run we sold every yeah yeah, and it, they were we fantastic. Couldn't, they couldn't, they Everybody laughed at almost everything. It was great. Yeah. My show, That's too. Great. The audience was... I mean, I even took pictures of them. La- was, yeah. Like, just the reactions, and they were... Or they'd be, like, hitting their... Like, if they were hus- a couple, they'd be, like, hitting their... Yeah. Right, I right. I mean, and like I said earlier, the men's response was almost... Not the women, not putting you down. Chill out. But the mm-hmm. men responding to it in the way... Because, like you said, it's not man bashing, right. but... No. It's, you know... But the men's response would crack me up. Right. Well, I'm, uh, so I'll use an example. I know I used when we were talking. We we went to a, out for coffee beforehand, and we were talking about the um, the the Mulan song. And I yeah. guess I'll give a little something yeah, away yeah, here. Yeah, sure, yeah. why not? And so mm-hmm. uh, we handle our Mulan. It's a, it's a song called "Without the Guy," mm-hmm. and we often wondered well, why is Mulan until the sequel, uh, but those yeah. don't count. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. until, <laughs> until the sequel, why is Mulan the only princess without a guy? And um, so, you know, we we went back and forth about it. And so we wrote it on the princess level. Here's here's this princess from um, Asian folklore and uh, specifically from China. And and then we went more into sort of the pop culture over and what you see up on the screen and how she's handled. And then I, you know, I wrote her to be um, uh, gay. Right. And and so uh, and and. And what we wanted to do was say on this third level, you know, because I'm gay or just because maybe I'm a little different than the other princesses, does that make me any less valid a person? Mm, So there's all these undercurrents Mm -hmm. of hot button topics that everybody relates to, whether it's woman empowerment, body image, Mm -hmm. um, uh, sexual identity, racism, all of that's in the show. But we play it for laughs because the last thing I want to do is hit you over the head with oh, a hammer. Yeah, sure. Wow. Because people will be like, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm good after 10 minutes. You and know? they do. Yeah. And one of them has to be gay out of, of all. Of course. Like, come on, you know. And, <laughs> of course. And they should be. And that's actually a great number. 10%, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, ten, yeah really. 10 characters. Well, we yeah, have finally, one. the first African-American princess. All yeah. I want to do is eat. And about which is body image. And... hilarious yeah. Number because the girls just came out and they were just very serious. We never played. We they, they really always played it for truth. Exactly. Truthful moment. They didn't play for the shtick. They weren't like, ha ha. No, they were real. The real women. Women. They yeah. were literally where women. I don't say dressed as princesses. They were. Yeah. They they didn't play up the princess thing. They were women yeah. in these. Mm-hmm. Where are these now, princesses? when you when you started, no, that's right. And when you started working on it, yeah. Did Princess and the Frog? already come out like did you have that yes. i'm trying to think of yeah because time it was already wise, out if it was yeah, already finally was that's what she's talking was about. from the original show well, no, that's right, but i'm saying when yeah. you started conceiving it yeah was that already was she already a character oh or do you mean was that added or later was that added later no she was she was somebody that i i wanted to bring into you know i originally i went back to the storybooks rather than go to to the movies mm-hmm. that are out there and i went back to the storybooks and i thought so after Pocahontas, who who has a gripe about the way they're portrayed in today's pop culture? So when the princess uh, who kissed the frog, as, as our character is, is called, came along, I thought to myself, you know, you go to the book and there's no description of what she looks like in the, mm. in the original tale at all. 
There's no description at all. There isn't a, a skin color. There isn't a hair color. Um, not even an eye color. She's known as the princess. Mm-hmm. That's all she's known as. And I thought to myself, I, I, you know, if you look at at, at a movie, you know, that that's out there, and and she spends three quarters of the movie green, as opposed to. <laughs> A yeah. woman of color. Well, right. she was a woman of color. Right. She, the color was green. Yeah. Right. And I thought, hmm, there's something about that mm-hmm. there for the first princess of color. Perhaps we could have done this differently. And that's what we try to do in the show is 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 we put her in as a tent pole mm-hmm. uh, in the show where she comes in at the end of the first act mm-hmm. and just raises the roof. She and, does. Yeah. All right. That's it, folks. They're calling it. Ah, <laughs> I bet you there's, there's a going siren down. going down. Yeah, yeah. Down. Uh, but finally, I had so much fun doing that number. It's a fun number. Because I did it's the upbeat. staging to the choreography, and I did um, the direction of the choreography. And that number, I was... So I much loved fun. it. I loved it. When Ethan Pop, who who again was Tony and yeah. Grammy nominated for uh, the music uh, uh, in Motown um, on Broadway, when we were sitting in the booth and 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 he was orchestrating and he said to me, "Okay, finally, what what would you like me to do with finally?" And I said, "Gee, let me think." You you were nominated for a Tony for really? Motown. You were nominated for a Grammy for the CD of Motown, the cast album. I'm pretty sure you do whatever I you want, you want with this. Your, I want you to do your thing. <laughs> you do you. Just boo. do your thing. You do you, boo. And he did. <laughs> he he did a great job. I love that. And Sora Joy Ross, who was from the original uh, Off Broadway show, um, and just won uh, last year a um, a Lortel Award uh, oh. for another show for Carmen Jones. She yeah. was in that with Anika Nani Rosen, and uh, she won an award. She's just dynamite. I mean, her her vocal on the CD yeah. is crazy good. I'm so, excited. About yeah. This so, so yes, the Princess yeah. Who Kissed Frog was around. Uh huh. So you mentioned how you're working on this production um, for you know Fairfield, Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Talk about your job as as a creator in the rehearsal room. So because this is not Ooh, I love it's that. It's not question. like a playwright Good going Danny. in for a new play since it's right. been around. Right. You know, are you are you tweaking anything? Are you are you providing? Just talk about that whole. Yeah. That process for you. Uh, the direct answer is yes, all the time. You know, there there are, uh, there are things we see and we go, oh, you know, what if we tried this? And you try to. I'm sure you did this as a director too. You you try to marry the the character, the the person who comes in, the actor with the role, rather than say it's got to be, you've yes. got to be this. Well, it's a collaboration. That's it. It's a collaboration right? between the director and the actors. Always. And that's what Always. I try and tell my students, because sometimes they'll be like, well, I made up this part. Well, yes, you did as an actor. Mm-hmm. That is your job. Yeah. Yeah, you know, exactly. I don't tell you cheat out. Do I mean my my little students? I do, right. but adult, sure. you know. Yeah. No, that's the collaboration. Yeah, and we have very <laughs> specific. You're so right. We you have very know? specific things that we put in it. That's timing based, and and that timing is very specific. But as far as the depth of a character goes, uh, we always, <clears throat> excuse me, always rely on that actor sure. to bring that in and work closely with the director. So my role now is we have. You know, Fieli uh, is is a director and directed it off Broadway, and Fieli and I collaborate on that. So we'll often talk in, um, you know, in the rehearsal room um, as long as it's our production and we're working on that. If it's somebody else's production, I I think Lauren will be able to tell you we stay out of the way because yeah. it's your production. Honestly, it's going to be I've your never, vision of I've the never, show. Like, Dennis wasn't up my butt, but I, if I would post pictures, yeah. you would absolutely share them. On absolutely. All, you would promote us. Yep, yep. You promoted our shows. And that's what I loved um, about working on it because it was nice having – because obviously if I'm doing like – South Pacific. I don't expect Rogers and Hammerstein Estate to be retweeting all my stuff. They're right. dead. Why not? No, I mean, they, but no, but like, we'll be seeing. I said, not them. Um, but oh. From that. the grave. I was say, cool that's just kind of impossible. Posting on social media or whatever, and then having Dennis or, you know, retweeting yeah. and saying, our, uh, I, you have a saying, our, dis, our, our princesses, no, princesses. Princesses unite. Yeah. And, and Hashtag princesses unite. unite. That yeah, one. That, and then or we'll always would, come up with a moniker for each production around the world yeah. because we create this worldwide, we call it the worldwide sorority of disenchanted, yeah, disenchanted princesses. Disenchanted worldwide. You can follow them on yeah. Insta. And um, we, so we'll do hashtag mm-hmm. either women's theater princesses. Yes. Um, or in this case, sometimes we do hashtag Parsippany princesses. Parsippany princesses. And and um, yeah, you know, it's important to us for every every person who's involved in 
every production that's out there to to have ownership mm -hmm. of of their part in this kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's it's so important, you know. I, I think it, it, it's it's we we try to be so inclusive about this and and have you take ownership of your show because your show is though the script and the music's and the, and the, the music and the lyrics are going to be the same your show is going to be different from the show in phoenix or the show Absolutely. in australia and you know or in, and it's in not argentina just the accents sure. or the language it's just yeah. it's almost sensibilities and morals of of that region. Of that culture. Yeah. Right. Because even like a show in Ohio mm -hmm. culturally is different than a show in Parsippany. Absolutely. Which right. is different than the culture of maybe something in Netcon. Oh, I mean, absolutely. They're That's so right. different. That's right. I want to give a shout out to my princesses. Yes, let's do so it. So I have to give a shout out to Here we um, go. Juliana Valente, who was Snow White. Yes. Kelly Wentz, who was Cinderella. Yep. Tara Henderson, who was Sleeping Beauty. Perfectly perfect. Yes. <laughs> Marlena Powell, who was Pocahontas and Princess and the Frog. Right. Tatiana, and I cannot remember her last name, but she was fabulous as the Little Mermaid and Rapunzel and Princess Baldrubador, yes. also known as Jasmine. Yes, the flying carpet. The fly right. Oh my God, <laughs> when she comes out with that, she and she worked that carpet, yes. she was so funny. And Lizzie Rain, who was our Mulan and mm -hmm. our Belle. And they were and they were just such a delightful group of ladies to work with. We only rehearsed for three weeks. Wow! Mm -hmm. So we put on the show awesome. for three weeks, and you know what? This show is—I will say—it's it's misleading. It seems like it's just some songs. No problem. Just some songs, and then you're like, "Oh God, yeah. it's vaudeville and it's Prince, rangy. It's rangy. The music yeah. is not. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mulan's easy. like here to here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tough, and it yeah. moves really quick. Like this one's exiting, this one's entering, and then the props. Uh. Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hit me the over the props. head with the microphone on that one. No, but I don't I think mean, I've ever written a show that doesn't have a lot of props in it. I don't know props. why. And the props yeah. in this show are insane. They're they crazy. They are hilarious. Puppets. Props. Puppets. Utensils. <laughs> oh, right. Giant fork and spoon. Boobs. Um, but you, I mean, you have to food? bring that world. Yeah. That's it. Right? You have to bring that world somehow. And I mean, yeah. you know, and that's just going to add to the humor of it as well. Right. Oh, exactly. Wh when the yeah. forks and the knives come out. Yeah. For, um, uh, for Bell's Insane. Insane. Yeah. The audience was dying. Oh, sure. Everyone and and knows our set it. was a castle. We had three, we had two oh, doors, cool. a fireplace. A stool. Oh, I remember this. The picture. A chair yeah. and like a little like chase lounge. Mm -hmm. So and it, and it worked yeah. because it, we set this tone. And then uh, I think the opening line is you know the, and they lived happily ever after. Oh, well, well yeah. oh, not, not, not exactly. exactly. And that was <laughs> almost at so, one point. I think it might have been almost early on. Yeah. It yeah. might have been. And then I think we went yeah. harder with it and said, not exactly. Yeah. And that's when they, <laughs> yes. and the, so right. they would first start when they would read, they'd be very princessy, like mm. you would imagine right. from Disney. And then yes. they would go, Boom. not exactly. <laughs> and then the real woman came out. That's right. And that's it. Yep. And um, there were, some, you know, the, the one number when we were talking about with the kazoo, which was one of my favorite numbers, getting that timing. <laughs> yes. Getting the timing of the kazoo. And the, so it, 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 a happy you, tune. A happy tune. Can right, you talk about right. that a little bit? Sure. A happy tune. Um, you know, it comes later in the show, and I wanted to sort of bring the theme is, uh, of the whole show is that this princess complex um, makes us do things um, that we wouldn't normally do. Um, in life, for instance, uh, Belle has given in to the princess complex, mm -hmm. which is why she's insane. Mm -hmm. We say that's why she's number two in the show. She comes out second because we say if you listen, if you pay attention to the princess complex, which is that idea of if you're, you know, this sort of overly vain, um, ditzy, insecure, Bambi-like waif, um, you're valid. Right, right, which right. we get right. from a lot of movies out there, right, and and some of the storybooks, and and if you give in to that, it drives you crazy. Yeah, and that's why Belle is insane in in our show, and then the princess complex sort of gets picked apart throughout the show. Yes. For us, that's the big that. bad. Yeah, the big bad in our show isn't a specific company or a specific <laughs> movie or a storybook. The big bad is the princess mm. complex, and that's the umbrella for mm -hmm. everything. So when we get to the ha a happy tune toward the end, I wanted to sort of tie up everybody's mm -hmm. arc. You know, it's not really a story oriented show. Um, the story is we're putting on a show and it's going to pieces yeah, right yeah um the but the arcs where these characters meet and you know sleeping beauty and and snow white uh, you know clash on this princess complex because sleeping beauty gets it from the start I, i'm i'm happy the way i am yeah 
What would be wrong with that? That's perfectly perfect. I'm That's perfect. right. Perfect. Yeah. And so when we get to a happy <laughs> tune, I want to. Oh no, I love it. Keep I saying. I know every it. song. That's great. Every song. <laughs> Lauren Moran Mills, one woman well, disenchanted. I will oh play God. all the parts. That's right. <laughs> I love Lots it. Lots of wigs. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Gilligan's Island episode where yeah. you, Phil uh, Silvers is going back and playing every role. Right. So I funny. just dated myself. And so, uh, <laughs> so there's reruns, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so a happy tune just ties up all. All those things mm-hmm. of, you know, for years, for years, we've made the bed, we've made the bed and whistled senselessly while we stayed mute. Yeah. And I thought, no, not anymore. Yeah. And so, you know, that song does end with a a, a three part harmony F U. Uh, we drop the F bomb, but, but we save it for them. But you know what? It's not excessive. No, I don't listen. No. I have a filthy mouth. I do. I, I I'm I'm working on it. I cannot help it. I think because I have children and I work with children, I'm pretty good at curbing it. But I love yes. a good f bomb. Yeah. But when it's abused in theater or in film, I, mm-hmm. you know, you become numb to it. Yeah. The brilliance of that song is it's the only you one. You have to. It has to. It, it needs works. to come out. Yeah. Has to have right. A, it needs yeah. to come yeah. out. You know. So. Well, and the the song itself bleeps. Yeah. It, all so the, the, so the curse words. The dinks, like every time they're saying it, it's a it's a triangle or a kazoo that bleeps the the bleeps the word. The and naughty at word. The end they do it. It's so until great. finally at the end they can't take it anymore. And they just say it. And they do f f f. You. People even you say know. it on the air. I love you, Dennis. I know. Say it. But let's say it. save it for the show we'll in Fairfield, it Connecticut show. next weekend. That's right. That's Where can right. they get tickets? Uh, gosh, um, they can go to mamchez.com, M-A-M-C-H-E-S dot com. Or, you know, you can always go to our website, which is www.officialdisenchantedmusical.com. Uh, We're also on Facebook, just Facebook backslash Disenchanted Musical. You, you, or you can just Insta. Google Disenchanted Musical. You can find us. Yeah, you yeah. really can. Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. you really can. Disenchanted Worldwide on Instagram. It'll all come up. That's right. I know I what's fun that. about that. Yeah. I love seeing all the different princesses. Yeah. Isn't it fun? You know what I love? To see what they do differently. All different and body types. All that's different, right. All different uh, ethnicities. I love it. And we talked about that, too, how yeah. these princesses don't have to be. We're going to talk a little about the about the uh, whole uh, fervor with uh, the Little Mermaid casting. Mm. Right, the right. Mer- the the, movie the new like Mermaid. Three. Yeah. I'm like, who cares if the girl can do it? Let Why? her do it. Why not? Should, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Why I know there's this mad? whole thing get... about hashtag not my little mermaid. I'm like, what? What? Well, I... that's sad because you're going to miss a good a, movie. Yeah. That's horrible. You're going to miss little... a good movie. Well, how narcissistic, right. not my little mermaid. I know. What? It's like, what are you talking it's like those about? Little, my little pony bitches. I can't stand. I can't stand. <laughs> 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 it's yeah. like, seriously. It's no, like, she's, we, we, you know, I think. every girl have a princess to look up to? That they could look back right. and see their face looking. I mean, back any princess yeah. they should be able to write it. Doesn't yeah, it have to look be like that. Anything, anyone, any, any, yeah. but and that is the script. If when you open the script, uh, the first line in it, in it is about casting, mm-hmm. and it says, "We encourage you." Well, I, I think it's stronger than encourage in that. Um, I should have brought a script so I can read it because I write this stuff and then I forget. Mm-hmm. So, but it, it's. Uh, Cast all shapes, sizes, yes. colors, ethnicities. That's what the show's about. Because it's, it's it's a show for all women. Yes, and, and you and you men did. too. And, and you I'm did saying, that, Lauren, you know? with your production. I mean, you had an Asian actress playing Belle. Yeah, yeah great. We talked about that. Great. Yeah, I, was I like, love it. I love it. That's what like, it should be. Yeah, oh, we were just talking off Broadway. And she's funny, and I think it, I'm like she'll be great. She's yeah. funny, and she's going to get the humor, and I think she'll. It was Lizzie, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. and she's going to nail the comedy. And you know what? She did. There was a production that was done. Oh, I'm not sure. I think it was Mississippi, and um, I I think it was Delta Stages. I try to really keep up with yeah, you're every good. production. You are good. And um, I think there were at least three or four uh, um, uh, African American princesses in that show. Great. Yeah. Off Broadway, we had. Um, um, you know, um, obviously, um, the Mulan character, and we also had um, the princess who kissed the frog. But often, you would see on on any given night with swings or or understudies, you right. would sing. You would see a uh, uh, black Cinderella or mm-hmm. or um, Sleeping Beauty, and I love it. Yeah, I, I, love I it. of I course. I actually am all for. Um, I don't. S- yeah, colorblind casting, which I guess Absolutely. is that mm-hmm. the term? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm fine with it. If, if someone's right for the role, I, I re- it really okay. They're I, right uh, for the role. Give it to the. I, I mean, go you know. right there with you. I follow you on your journey. Mm-hmm. Um, 
if, if you're playing the part truthfully and you're honoring the text and you're honoring the character, then I'm fine with it. I mean, that's what makes theater exciting to be able to see that live, yeah. see that person right. become the character. I think and you even bring fun. something more important to the character than than. I mean, you know, I always say, um, y'all y'all make me look better than I am. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's everybody. I often say this. We were talking a little before this. Everybody who's had a hand in this show, one way or another, whether it's a princess or a music director mm-hmm. or a costumer, a director, a producer, whatever. Everybody who's had a hand on uh, on this show or in, in in this show is central to what the show is today. Mm-hmm. It's so true mm-hmm. because you can't do this alone. I love that I'm you a can't little do it like alone. A part of this you are of the show. I do. I yes. love it. I love it. We call it the show's <laughs> distry. Get it? Yeah. Oh, I love that. D I S. I love that. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I love it. I love that. It's in my. On my resume, I love that. It's in my bio. I'm very proud. Well, we love that you did. The wheelhouse. It. And especially yeah. a place called Women's Theater. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we I mean, were really hoping you could come great. see it, but I know that you were. I wanted to, and then we got, st- uh, I love the West Coast, so when I say stuck, I don't mean it negatively, but we were we were stuck on the West Coast, yeah. and, and unfortunately, uh, but our plan was to come see it. Yeah. I remember We try that. to get to as many as possible, um, and not as a judgment thing. You know, we it's love nice to come to and it's cheer. Exciting. It's exciting to have the creators in, yeah. in the room. I love yeah, it. We just I cheer for the the team that's putting it together and for the audience that's just that's exciting yeah we just come to have fun I bring my mom you know she's the original disenchanted princess she's yeah. 85 she's still working at a gym I love yeah. her yeah. And, your mom uh, is my spirit animal yeah she's great she's great and um, and she works with folks uh, in a diabetes center and oh wow so at 85 she's the original disenchanted princess who said what do you mean I can't do this well, what are you talking about? I'm going to go do it, you know, and and uh, the yes we can, yes. right? The Rosie the Riveter, yes. good for her. And so she tries to get to as many as possible God bless her. as well. And and the women like to meet her, and and uh, yeah. So it's it's been a lot of fun. We've had a great time with it. Um, it's great to get the feedback from the audience. We do talkbacks often mm-hmm. at, at different shows, and and uh, it's great to hear what what people feel about her, or what questions they have, you know, um, because. It informs us, right? You know, if you're not learning, you're dead. You know, I yeah. I have a question about. Let's let's do it. Let's get into <clears throat> okay. the. All right, I'm rolling up my sleeves. Okay. Here we go. Well, I have a all question right. about process because yeah. I find uh, I always like to ask writers what their actual process mm. is when they're doing pen to paper. If you like doing like writing on a computer, if you do mm. a mix of stuff, if you need to be out of your house to write. Like, yeah. like I want to know, like the nitty gritty, like what is your daily habits as a writer to write? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. yeah, that's good a good question, question, Cab. Yeah. Because there are there are writers who set up a specific, and when you read a writing book, usually the first chapter is about set up your specific writing place, <laughs> uh, desk, and a visual image, yeah. and you know that's on the wall in front of you. And part of that works for me, and most of it doesn't. Um, I, you know, I, I write when I'm in the zone. If I don't, it feels forced to me. And and people say, get in the habit of writing, get in the habit of writing. Well, I do write every day in here. Do I necessarily put it on paper every day? No. I don't sleep at night, you know, uh, because I'm consistently right. and constantly writing. I write best outside, um, mm-hmm. sitting near a body of water or a fountain. For some reason, mm, no, no, no. you know, it, uh, maybe I'm like lightning thief. Yeah, I have to be near yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Son of Poseidon. But you saw it last night. Yeah. And, oh, nice. uh, oh, it was great fun. Opening night. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, I need to be outside, and I usually take, I go old school. I uh, often, on, on uh, Facebook and Instagram, on the social media platforms, I talk about that bench that mm. I first started writing the song, uh, One More Happily Ever After. At, and I started at the beginning. I, I wanted the opening number, and then... They could come in whatever order they came into my head, and then, um, I, and then oh, that's what it. When the lights went out, I was going to tell you about how I wrote that closing number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, I write mostly outdoors. It frees me somehow. I feel claustrophobic inside. Um, and then when I walk, I hear a beat and I hear music. Um, Kevin knows this, but I, I don't read music. You know, put me in the. I think it's Paul McCartney and Elton John. Not in terms of I'm that good. I'm not. But I, I, I think. They, I'm sure they read music now, but I think there are many people out there who don't read music. So mine comes naturally. I hear it in the footsteps, or and now I'm going to sound like Keith Partridge on the Partridge Family and the Windshield Wiper, and then we're going to write a song, you know. Yeah, yeah. But my process is really to just l- 
open up, loosen myself up, and channel what it's going to sound so metaphysical, but You're channel right. whatever the message is that 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 I'm being chosen to put out there. I love this because that's it. Yeah. That's like you my know? like my whole mantra. Because the first the question universe. I'll always get at a, at a at a talk back is, "What does an old white guy know about this subject matter?" And and I laugh when they ask it, and I look at them and I say, "I don't know." I I um. I grew up in a very female centric family. My dad died young and 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 so uh it was my mom and my sisters and and we we grew up and and, and I I just had a a connection with with women and a lot of my best friends are are very strong empowered women and I didn't write a single song so going forward in the process. So the first thing I do is I come up with the idea. I just let it come into me and then I'll start jotting down some notes, some ideas. If I hear a specific lyric, I'll jot that down. And then I'll walk a little and I'll start to hear music. And then I go back to the piano and start to play the music that I hear. And then I let the piano take over. Mm. The piano tells me where to go. What sounds right next? What would be good here? What is she trying to say? Does that need to sound more dramatic? Does it need to go minor? Does it need to... What, it, what needs to happen? And then for this show specifically, I took it to all my strong female friends and I said, what do you think? So tell the truth, and if they said, yeah, that's good, could you maybe, and I would go, yeah, yeah, let me look at that again, or a good example is all I want to do is eat. I didn't have the end of the song. Flounder never existed in that song, oh, the best, part of the, best song. part of the song, and it didn't go to that gospel place yeah. that it goes to, and so it just sort of ended, all I want to do is eat, and just sort of faded. And so I took it to a nutritionist, female friend of mine, and I mm -hmm. said, what do you think? And she said, sounds like an e a sad eating disorder song. Yeah. And I said, that wasn't my intention. But and it works. So she said, I said to her, uh -oh. maybe I change the end a little. Oh, right. Yeah. Maybe yeah. pick it up a yeah. little, maybe make it a little funnier. And she said, try that. Yeah. So I took it back. I went back to that fountain, and I wrote again, and um, and that became then. The Flounder Park's yeah. the best. He Fieli best. was great, too. I brought in, I was sitting there. Fieli was washing mm -hmm. dishes in the kitchen, and I was saying, listen to this song. All I want to do is eat. All I want to do. He goes, wait, wait, do it again. Do it again. He turned off the faucet, and I said, okay, all I want to do is eat. And from the kitchen, he yells out, a burger. And I went, stop, stop. Yes, that's all I needed. And then I went back out to the fountain yeah. that I used to write at. I was in Vancouver, B.C. at the time writing. And, and I went back out, and I thought of all my junk foods. Mm. Every junk food in the show is... I'm eating it. A right? Oh, listen, so, you have yeah. that Dorito. Yes. Ah. Right? My chip of choice. Right? Which Dorito. happens to rhyme with Cheeto Dorito. and it's burrito. Perfect, which oh, is perfect. Right. God. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So, you know, that's my process. And then um, when I put a show up in front of an audience, I'll go out into the lobby at intermission or after the show is over. Nobody knows what I look like. Thank God, because... Unfortunately, you for this is a face for radio, oh. and so oh. I, I'm I'll sit there with my phone, looking like I'm answering messages, but I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening to the audience because those are your best critics. Exactly. No offense to critics. I mean, some critics have come in and given me really good feedback yeah. that I put in the show, and some of it not so much. And you let it go in one ear. Yeah. Let it go out One the other if it doesn't opinion. make sense to and you. And especially in that kind of environment, they're not asked to review a show. They're they're, they're actually having that. Yes, they're honest, and that's where you're really going to get the honest feedback. And so I'll be sitting there, and then they'll say, "Oh, you know, I, I loved this, but this not so much." And I'll go, "Okay, yeah, well, let's Take go back and look yeah. at that. Let's look at that. Let's see." So that's my process. I think you have to start on your own, let it let it wash over you, and then as more people get involved. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to listen. But, but, that's, but always stick by that's, your, your heart. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's be so true. great that you do that though, because there's so many people out there that don't want to hear what you think. Yeah, you know, yeah. or you know, or they'll just be like, "Oh, it's an audience member. What do they know?" Even though they're the ones that are coming in. They I, could be going I, to shows every they weekend. Can, yeah, right. Yeah, like, you know so I, mean? I think just, just hearing how how open you are and how collaborative you are. I mean, I love how you went to a nutritionist to ask about. A song. a song about I mean, food. A song yeah. about food, but I mean, <laughs> right. even, you know... Or eating. Right. Yeah, and I just body that it's such a funny song, though. Yeah, that's... Yeah, it turns out... And, and that was a note we just gave in, in uh, for the Connecticut show in New York City. We said, two rules and all I want to do is eat. You are not a victim. Yeah. And it's not sad. No, exactly. If it's either one of those two or both of those two, the, this show ends right here. Mm. The audience goes, I'm out. I'm out. The audience cracked up with ours. They yeah, loved it. Fun. They loved it. They loved that number because the it's girls were like, "Yeah, I just want, 
Oh, I want to Well, because you, you want to relate, you know, and you want everyone Hagerita. in the audience to relate too. Like relate. that's what they want. They want a burger. That's right. You know? That's <laughs> right. We've all had our issues. <laughs> we all have had our issues. I'm with making food. pierogies tonight. So we Come can on, all now. what? <laughs> yeah, are you? I am. I'm doing pierogies. Party at her house. That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so yeah, that's I the, love, that's yeah. my process. That's I don't great. think that's everybody's process. I know people write. Some people write every day. Yeah. I just sort of open up the definition of writing. Mm. I think if I'm laying on a couch and I'm thinking about the show and I'm thinking, oh, maybe she should be here or maybe I should have that lyric there. That's writing to me. Mm. You know, so I'm mm. constantly mm. doing it. It just not. I can't sit at a desk and write. Yeah. It drives me crazy. So that's just me. Yeah, yeah I can't I, do that I either. That. So I like create. Sometimes my choreography happens in my car. A grocery that's when, store? That's yeah. when, uh, I, when, I, when I got music, because I was like, I just right. need to listen to music in my car, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that's where all my... St- like, I can't sit at home and put on music no. and go, now no. I'm going to go Yeah. Well, that and just I, doesn't happen, because I, I see pictures in my head when I hear the music. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just I play it over and over again in the pictures, and then I get them into my body, and then I teach. Yeah, and Fiala and I write best when we're traveling. You know, sitting in a car, on a train, on a plane, and new ideas come. I don't know why that is. That's just our process. Well, I love how you mentioned a body of water. I mean, for me, the the oceans, like I always say, is my happy place. You love the ocean. I love the ocean, but I feel like when I'm in the ocean, I'm like, well, I'm calmer. You're free. You're free, and you just Mm -hmm. listen, Mm -hmm. you know, where... I feel like on the couch or, or, you know, you're just, you're distracted by something else or, you know, I think that's it. It takes you away from every, (laughs) all the vestiges of today's world and you're just by yourself out in nature. Yeah. Um, I guess that's why people take writing retreats. Yeah. Mm, Yeah. 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 But um, I, I think, you know, as you find what your process is, and if that works for you, keep it. Exactly. Don't listen to anybody else. Don't, don't listen to them. When I do, sometimes I, I do workshops on, on writing and whatnot, and that's what I start with. Don't find what it. your process is. Other people can give you guidance, but once you find what your process is, um, you know, it's like, you know, why force something? You know, you can't take a square and fit it into a circle. It doesn't work that well, way. My, I always find say your circle. My right? advice to you is don't take advice from anyone because you know what? <laughs> Often. <laughs> Seriously, right? because how can what works for me work for Kevin? <coughs> mm-hmm. How can what works for Kevin work for Danny? How can what Danny? That's it's right. what works. And I think we forget that. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the times we impose our opinions and what we think is right because obviously we're we can't see outside of what we're or, seeing. Or what about when you're you know I always what drives one of my pet peeves is you just need to talk and you're yeah. not asking for an opinion and so yeah I just want to vent. They vent, True. but I'll vent tell someone I'll be like I didn't ask for your opinion. And it's always just, the opinion you don't want to hear, of course, and you're right. just like you listen. No, but I'll call yeah. them out. I'll be, yeah. I'll be like thank you. I'm like I'm just venting. I don't uh, really want your opinion. <laughs> I have no problem. You're so right. Both oh, Doing just, that. Uh, both of you are so right because the. I think you have to find that that balanced person. My my screenwriting teacher. I, I, yeah. I only took one writing class. That's the other thing. I never I just grew up in New York, you know, so I was always in a Broadway or off Broadway yeah, house. That's mostly how you off learned. Broadway. You learned in the field. So I just learned by watching, mm-hmm. right. you know, and going, Oh, I like that. Well, maybe not. Oh, this is this speaks to me and and so you you find that person or people who love you enough to kindly tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they don't criticize you. They just say, yeah, it's a little eating disordery. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. Di- Diane Meehan, I should say her name, and Lance Fitzgerald, yeah. and PJ Mark, and, and my mom, and my sisters, and, and of course, uh, Fieli. So my screenwriting teacher wrote the original movie, The Blob. Oh, wow. With, oh, with her husband, and she always said, I did most of the writing, but my husband was my bouncing yeah, you know, mine board. is mine too. My yeah. husband's my bouncing board. You have to have that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I call him the balance person. You have to have that balance mm-hmm. person who comes in and tells you the truth, but lovingly. Mm. And you, you know, know what? And yeah. it's so true because I'm not, um, like I said, I love criticism, but I'm very, sometimes I think sometimes people will criticize you because it's something that they, uh, a shortcoming that they see within themselves. And they mm. want to make themselves feel better. So they have to yeah. put you down. Yeah. But I will also not enable you to continue poor behavior. So I won't make you feel bad, but if I feel like you're on a downward spiral, I'm going to call you out on right. it. Because enabling For your own is, good. Well, because enabling is selfish. Sure. Enabling right. is like, well, I feel uncomfortable. So I'm going to continue to let this person fall down this downward spiral because it makes me feel better. Um, so, so yeah, for so the people, and that's why I say kindly. everybody who's touched the show, you know, we can go back to the New Jersey playwrights. Mm-hmm. They were so central. Every, everybody who worked on that show because 
uh, and and the people in Orlando and whatnot because they they mm-hmm. all bring something that you may not have in yourself. Yeah. And you're thankful yeah. for well, that. Well, one person. Yeah. So um, I always say, and we were talking about this earlier, I'm always grateful. I, and I put this on my Facebook mm-hmm. all the time. I'm forever grateful to the people who helped put this show to where it is because you can't well, do it without them. I love them. that you're so grateful. So you can't. Before, B- we before we let you go, I, okay. I, I'm yeah, sorry. dying to know, and, and you have to pick one. Oh, oh no, here we go. You're going to make me favorite choose princess. between my babies. Okay. No, yeah, yeah. Which is your and, you have to, and you have to pick one. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to give yeah. you, this is not I'm a, being, s- being I have to pick one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the ship is sinking and they're all going to die except one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Kevin. Yes. Thank okay, you, Kevin. Okay, so it's really <laughs> difficult because, I, and this is not a stock answer, it's really the truth. There is a piece of me, and I think as, as writers, we all, and yeah. directors, and theater folk, we all know this, there's a piece of me in every princess that's, you know, a piece of my personality. I, I, I have that sort of Snow White domineering part of me, but yeah. I also have that Cinderella sort of lay back and go, oh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And um, the Sleeping Beauty who believes that I'm perfect just the way that yeah. I am, and the little bit of crazy, insane Belle, all of them, right? And so, boy, my favorite princess... You know, the stock answer in me says my mother. Yeah. So, and I'm Italian, so yeah, of, of course, course that's what you of say. Of course, that's what you say. Um, yeah, in the show, I really have Get to the say there really you. is something in each one of them that I say, I, I'd rather drown myself than just save one, yeah. you know, and, and, and have all, all ten of them use me as a flotation device or something, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's so difficult, and I'm really not trying to hedge on it, but I really do. There is something in each character in this show that I absolutely love and could not live without. Now, if you were to ask me who am I most like... <laughs> okay, who are you most like? Snow White. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I'm, I'm most Snow like White Snow White. Is, uh, she's like, the, mm. I love her too. What about you, Lauren? So, yeah. having directed it, who's your favorite? I think the one, um, oh God, he's really right because you could definitely, even as a, I didn't even write it, I just directed it, you could definitely take something from every princess that you can relate to, which is what's so brilliant about it. But I love Snow White. Yeah. So I just, there's, you know. She's broken. Yeah. And, and she's, she's tough and she, believe she's, she's the speaking she's, she's the, the oldest one. one she's the first mm-hmm. she's the og and she yeah she always she feels like she's fighting against this princess complex while she somehow Succumbing subtext wise is right is, is 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 making it live on yeah you know, with the yeah, perfect without, hands and the perfect makeup she and corrects the perfect, herself uh, right exactly and mm-hmm. and she's just mm-hmm. trying to get the message out she's not trying to be mean she's just moving this show along and then she gets reminded toward the end of Mm, you know, you're a little princess complexy yourself. Mm-hmm. And she realizes, and it, and it comes over, and she's like, oh, no, what? And I appreciate that in Snow White. Yeah. I appreciate the sarcasm in her yeah, as, as I, well. Yeah, I like that, too. It's fun. I love playing the straight man to, yeah. to all the goofs, you know? Yeah. It, it's fun to do that. Hard to do. Hard to do. I when feel like it's the hardest role in the show, too, because, because you because don't want to play it mean, mm. or nobody... No, no nobody, one will like no her. No one's going to like her. Nobody's going to... And you have to love that person. So she needs to be part mother, you know, motherly Sisterly. Energy, sisterly, friend. friend mm-hmm. But also, you know, the strong fist that keeps the show together that's falling apart. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think she's complicated. And I like that. I like complicated people. The, the characters yeah. are very well developed. I Thank have you. to say. Oh, As the person sweet. I worked on, they're, they're not so... They're th- they are three-dimensional. We wanted that. We, which is great. Because we were, we're fighting the one dimension you see yeah. on the oh, yeah. screen. Or yeah, reading the book. so it's nice yeah. to bring them some life. So we want to thank you so much, Dennis Giacino. Thank you for our gift. Yay! So that you're welcome. Where can we get these again? Yes. You can get this at uh, www.dis album d i s a l b u m dot com of course it's also available for streaming on uh, kevin mentioned spotify um the, you can find it on cd baby you can find it on itunes i think it'll soon be on amazon so just go ahead and search for it circle. and yeah, i think he wants to play it oh we got something we here have, let's do something oh. Real quick, yeah. give us the dates again for the Fairfield show. Fairfield is next Friday and Saturday, 2526, up in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, and uh, you can go online and buy your tickets. Just search uh, Fairfield, Connecticut, Disenchanted Musical, or go to officialdisenchantedmusical.com. And you'll you'll uh, be able to read all about the show, the reviews. You'll hear MP3s. There's a little bit of video. You can actually see some of the Italian video on that website. <gasps> 
website. Oh, that's exciting. It's we got to check that out. And, and I think some of the Spanish video as well in oh, Dominican wonderful. Republic. And I want to give a shout out to Barbara Krakowski, who yes, Barbara. gave me the show to, d- to direct. She's home recovering. I love Barbara. Um, but she's great, and she trusts me with the show. And we actually kind of, um, she produces, but we kind of work together. Uh-huh. I mean, we have a very good marriage of our ideas. That's like so Fiala and I. Yeah. yeah, same thing. Gotta so we kind of person. like, yeah. we work well together. So if it wasn't for her, you might not be sitting here right now. That's true. There so you thank go. you, That's Barbara. Very true. Okay, which yeah. song gonna, are we going to play? Oh, we're going to we're going to do the, pick? the Once Upon a Time outro, or you I don't know. Do what do you think? What do you think's best? I oh, I'm well, do big tits. let's do big tits. Oh my god. Yeah, let's do big tits. Yes. We're doing big okay, tits. Okay, so for the audience, just big know tits. this song has a point to it, right? And we talked about it. The the point being that, you know, that this is women commiserating about how men it, it see them, how men treat them, and so they call it out to take away its power. Yes. Right? And and to empower themselves. Yes. Right. And it's fun and it's great. And it's it's probably the most vaudeville song in the it show. It is. It's yeah. vaudeville And the whole and the way we did it was very vaudeville. And you'll hear it. It's got vibra slaps and, and bells and whistles all the way through it. All right. So we'll play out the this show with some big Yay, tits. I'm thank you call. so Goodness. much, oh my Dennis, God. Thank you for having in. me. Thank Thanks, you, Dennis. Thanks I'm to everybody you. who's been working on the show.